Hi guys, so we got Christmas present with uh, the new IMX6 Rex board just uh, came from uh, from the manufacturing and we are going to open it uh. We haven't seen even the PCB board because the PCB was shipped directly to the assembly house. So this is for this is the first time we we will see the PCB and it's the first time we will see the board, the assembled board. We we ordered six or uh, five prototypes. So let's see how it looks. A lot of components. Maybe here. the new IMS IMX6 Rex board looks really nice we have also got a CD from uh, from the assembly house with uh, some pictures and videos when uh, the board the IMX6 Rex board was uh, assembled so we will include the, this video on our blog so you can see the procedure of placing the components and soldering the components down what are the next steps what what we are going to do um, we will use one of these boards and uh, first we will do just a visual inspection if all the components are fitted we will check if the components for the variant which we ordered are fitted we will check if the pin number one is correctly placed and uh, just have a look under microscope if uh, there are no visible shortcuts or, or something uh, which doesn't look right that's the first step what uh, we are going to do looks okay and I, I'm also looking if the if parts are soldered okay because uh, some boards sometimes some boards uh, may look better soldered or higher quality i will pick this board uh, as the first board which we will be testing so the board which looks the best soldered especially looking uh, on these uh, qfn packages in this SMD connector looks good looks really good now I'm checking the crystals and uh, I uh, also printed a really big assembly drawing and we marked 
there all the important points with voltages and it may not be visible on the camera okay now uh, you can see it. it's the light but these assembly drawings are exactly the same what are in the uh, production directory and actually based on the assembly drawing we can see what components should be fitted and what should not be fitted. So when I'm looking on the assembly drawing and I'm looking on the board, I can see if the right components are not fitted. So that's what uh, what is really important to compare. Now, before we move further, we will place uh, a sticker on each board and we will write down a number so each board will have one number one two three four five and you can identify each board if you don't use stickers they all look exactly same why because uh, some boards may have problems with some peripherals or with something so you can easily write down number one board number one has this and this issue board number two has this and this issue board number three doesn't have any issues yeah? and uh, in the next step we are going to measure resistance between ground and all the power rails so we will measure the resistance between input voltage and ground between uh, 1.5 voltage and ground between uh, processor core voltage and ground and this is important don't be surprised the some power rails have very low resistance like processor core voltage usually has very low resistance 20 ohms or 40 ohms 90 ohms what we are looking for there must not be or there should not be zero ohm resistance that short circuit that's something wrong so i double check i have zero ohm on on my dvm yeah and i take the assembly drawing with the points which uh, i'm going to check so I see all the power rails test points. I'll show you. This is the assembly drawing and uh, you can see here I have some red points yeah and there is also uh, voltage what should be there. another red point with voltage. And so here yeah these are the points which i'm going to check what is the resistance on the on these points that's what i'm going right now that's what i'm doing right now so one on the ground second one on the usually capacitors are the best ways to do it Now, very important step, we are going to connect power to the module. We don't have baseboard yet, but we still can test the module. And what we are going to test uh, is uh, we will measure all the voltages, if they are OK. And uh, to do so, I have connected wires directly to the input voltage and uh, it's good that we don't have baseboard we can we can also measure on the bottom of the module if we have baseboard and we plug it in we would not be able to measure voltages which are on the bottom so it's no problem at this stage i set up my uh, power supply to 10 volts and 1.5 amp limited so if there is a big problem big short circuit or something the current is limited that's very important so your board will not 
blow up. And uh, I set it up to 10 volts because it's easy to calculate the power. We are expecting uh, to be the current somewhere between half amp and one amp for this module. I will cover the PCB in case uh, there is something wrong and it will blow, so it will not damage anything, you know, your eyes or something. And Martin is going to switch the power on. So let's do it. 0 0.12 and uh, power OK, LED is on. That's great. Very good start. I will leave it. I'm watching the current, it's stable. Uh, it is quite low current, so I'm not expecting uh, anything going very hot. But that's the next step. So I try first the processor. It's OK. And I'm testing if there is a component which, which is not really very hot. Everything seems to be OK. Good. This is a really good start. Nothing is getting hot. So we can now measure all the voltages if they are correct. Okay, we are measuring the, the voltages now. So 2.5 volt. Two point fifty five, perfect. Then one point five memories, one point five zero. Wow. Core one point three seven, perfect. Three point three. Good. Three point zero, perfect. So we are going to uh, measure clock, RTC clock and other oscillators if uh, all the oscillators are running on the PCB now. Looks like all the crystals are oscillating OK. All the three processor has two crystals, 125 MHz and 132 kilohertz. Ethernet crystal is also oscillating fine. So that's really good. And we can move to the to the next step, which is uh, we will actually try to solder down a USB cable and connect the module with uh, with our PC and uh, see if the Freescale uploader will recognize the module. We have connected USB. Okay, and we are going to connect it to computer now. This is a device. It's a good sign. Let's check it. It's there! It's there! <laughs> Now the module is connected and uh, on our PC we can see heat compliant device. That's a really good sign because we can run MFG tool Freescale software which actually can load now a binary to the module. So that's what we are going to do now. We press start, loading kernel, loading OS image. And the current is changing, so that's a really good sign. That means the module is doing something. And that's it. Good. We are going to check uh, serial port now, if there is uh, some serial output. And if yes, we will connect the console and let's see if there is a message.
what uh, I have done now is I have connected scope to serial port 1 TX transmit signal and uh, we are going to have a look if uh, if we will see some activity there so I switching on power supply and connecting the module to PC and Martin is uh, now uploading the images so if everything is working okay after the images are uploaded on the console we should see some signals ah! and it's booting you can see it this is really good there is activity on the serial port everything what we have to do now is just uh, connect uh, Aris 232 transmitter transceiver and uh, let's see what the messages are the moment of the truth this is the module I found a uh, a board with the RS232 transceiver which we are going to use temporary it's connected to my laptop and I'm switching on the power supply I'm connecting my debug board This is our console and looking if there will be something. You can see Martin is loading the firmware. It's there! Yes! Booting! Linux! Oh! We are so good! We are really good! This is great. This is really great. Congratulations, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> we can go home. <laughs>